Hi everybody, Edward here from renegadeinvestor.co.uk and today I'm looking at the following proposition. Will Bitcoin investment become the only game in town in the future? With historically high valuations today in all major asset classes due to massive central bank and government interventionism, what governments and central banks worldwide have essentially done is they have brought forward future productivity in order to support overvalued asset prices in the present, but at the cost of sacrificing future prosperity. So what do you do today if you're a millennial trying to grow your wealth in a world where major asset classes are at or near all time high valuations and wages are stagnant? Or if you're a baby boomer trying to protect your wealth in an environment of slowing returns in traditional asset classes that are at major risk from a slowdown in the real economy? So today we're going to be talking about why Bitcoin could quickly become the go to investment over the next six years when compared to other traditional assets, including real estate, stocks, bonds and currency. And we'll take a close look at just how high the price could go if Bitcoin moves into these markets by just 5 percent and why the risk reward perspective in Bitcoin is almost unprecedented in human history. The scenario I will be exploring in this video is based on a six year time scale, which I believe is a long enough time period from 2016 to take us into the exponential growth period for Bitcoin based on previous modern technology trends that have experienced mass adoption. I'll also be looking at a potential price of Bitcoin based on a 5% wealth transfer from all the other traditional asset classes we'll be looking at today. Why 5%? Because in my opinion, many people will primarily see Bitcoin as an inflation and counterparty hedge asset before it becomes a widely used stable currency. And 5-10% to is a common portfolio weighting recommendation for gold, the current most widely used asset in this space. In six years time, around the year 2022, we can also approximate that the amount of Bitcoins in circulation will be around 80 million units when you factor in lost Bitcoins as well. Before we get started, it's also important to note that Bitcoin at this time is still a high risk asset to hold. And whilst I do not give financial advice, please see my disclaimer. You will see that over the duration of this video, in my opinion, you really don't need to allocate more than 5% of a portfolio at this time for potentially huge returns, depending on the size of your portfolio and the level of risk that you want to take. So let's get started. The first market we're going to look at where we could see capital flowing into Bitcoin from in the near future is the tradable global real estate market. And whilst a lot of the information that's presented here is taken from the UK, there is a strong correlation with UK real estate data and other parts of the Western world at this time. The biggest problem with investing in the real estate market at the moment, in my opinion, is the fact that the underlying supply demand fundamentals of this market that should give us accurate price discovery have been completely distorted by out of control money creation through the likes of quantitative easing, fractional reserve banking, as well as multiple government policies designed to exacerbate what appears to be an already overvalued asset bubble. These policies have led to artificially low interest rates, which in turn has led to the impotence of yielding assets. This has led to a perfect storm of yield chasing property price speculation based mainly on the belief of ever increasing extension of credit debt and low interest rates in order to justify the current price valuations. For example, in the UK, we have seen subprime lending. Artificially low interest rates help to buy schemes where government subsidises the purchase of a property and allows buyers to purchase with as little as a 5% deposit. We have seen an extension of that policy, as well as start a home scheme which allows first time buyers to purchase new bills at a 20% discount. A help to buy ISA, which is a property savings account, again subsidised by government contributions. Even as I was creating this video, I discovered yet another government scheme starting in the UK from February 2016 called the London Help to Buy Scheme, which doubles the amount buyers in the capital can receive through government loans from 20 to 40%. Does this look like well-balanced government policy? or a desperate attempt to support an overvalued property market that contributes a disproportionate amount to the UK GDP calculation. Due to these interventions, we are beginning to see an undeniable large divergence between real estate prices and average income that can only be sustained through further artificial stimulus. Because of all the reasons above and the fact we could soon see more supply hit in the market from downsizing baby boomers, there is a good chance that the millennial demographic will not be able to pick up the artificially inflated demand side and this could lead to dropping real estate prices and capital outflows. This is a view also supported by research from world-renowned economic forecaster Martin Armstrong, whose real estate business cycle model predicts capital outflows in the real estate market through to the year 2033. 
So what would happen in the medium term if just 5% of the capital currently invested in the global real estate market moved into Bitcoin? In order to calculate this, I am using the World Bitcoin Network Bitcoin Price Model application. I'll put a link below in the description to this. And as specified, it is for educational purposes only. So based on statistics from a recent infographic by Jeff Desjardins of TheVisualCapitalist.com, which I will also link to in the description, the estimated value of tradable global commercial real estate is $7.6 trillion. Bearing in mind the current price of Bitcoin at the time of recording is around $430. If we put this into the Bitcoin price model, we get an estimated Bitcoin price of $12,000 per Bitcoin. Next, we're going to put in the figure for tradable global residential real estate, which based on a median of a multitude of estimations is around the $40 trillion mark. If we add this to the Bitcoin price model, we get an estimated price of around $75,000 per Bitcoin. So the next market we're going to take a look at where we could see capital flows into Bitcoin from in the future is the global stock markets. And just like real estate, the main global stock markets, in my opinion, are also overvalued due to the same reasons of fractionals of banking, quantitative easing and low interest rates, which by the Fed's own admission has taken these markets far beyond their fair market value and has put the markets at risk of a major sell off. As Richard Fisher, former president and CEO of the Dallas Fed, states in this clip on CNBC. Basically, we had a tremendous rally, and I think there's a great digestive period that's likely to take place now, and it may continue because, again, we front loaded at the Federal Reserve an enormous rally in order to accomplish a wealth effect. We also need to take into account that following the recent Federal Reserve rate hike, it's going to be much harder for the biggest stock markets in the world, especially in the US, to justify their heightened valuations when they are put at continued risk of a strengthened dollar and declining exports on top of already expected weakness in 2015 corporate earnings. In addition to this, no less than 23 other nations around the world have already experienced heavy stock market losses that could trigger long drawn out bear markets, including the Chinese Shanghai Stock Exchange Composite that even since the beginning of 2016 has seen intraday price declines of over 6%, which has rattled international stock markets and investors who fear that China could be entering an extended period of economic contraction. The potential risk of contagion from a Chinese hard landing has now wiped over $3 trillion off global stock markets in the first two weeks of 2016, and we have witnessed the worst start to a year for major US indexes ever. If you take all of this into account, along with the prospect of slowing growth around the world, highlighted by record lows in the Baltic Dry Index, along with crashing oil and commodity prices, it becomes hard to see how current stock market valuations will be justified if this trend continues. So what would happen in the long run if just 5% of capital currently invested in global stock markets moved into Bitcoin? Again, based on statistics from the infographic by Jeff Desjardins of The Visual Capitalist, who calculates the size of all global stock markets at $70 trillion, if we put this figure into the Bitcoin model on top of the figures from global real estate, we get an estimated Bitcoin price of $185,000 per Bitcoin. The next market we're going to look at, which in the long term we could also see capital flows into Bitcoin from, is the global bond market, which consists of debt securities, including sovereign, corporate, financial, municipal, money market accounts, agency securities, and asset-backed securities. And just like all the other markets I have listed, this market has once again been pushed to extreme valuations through worldwide QE, which has provided huge artificial demand side for bonds. And this has pushed down global bond yields so that they are no longer reflective of the underlying risk. In fact, since 2007, $57 trillion has been added to total global debt, a lot of which has come from monetary policies like QE in order to roll over maturing debt as well as support government deficit spending. Financial and corporate debt has also exploded as companies take advantage of low interest rates in order to carry out leverage refinancing operations in order to carry out stock buybacks, which in turn has pumped global stock markets well beyond their underlying fundamentals. This 35-year bull market in bonds aided by artificial stimulus has culminated in no less than 12 sovereign countries with various degrees of negative yielding bonds, all of which could signal that we are near the end of this secular bull market. In addition to this, many central banks have now reached a zero lower bound in interest rates where they can no longer lower them in order to stimulate growth or inflation. And when this is combined with the slowing of the global economy highlighted earlier in this video, it has the real possibility of leading to debt destruction and loan delinquency, which could be a catalyst for capital outflows in multiple sectors of the global bond market. This is also dependent on whether central banks decide to once again double down on QE, but this can only be sustained for so long before potential currency crises come to fruition.
So what would happen in the long run if just 5% of the global bond or debt market found its way into Bitcoin? Based on statistics from the infographic by Jeff Desjardins of the Visual Capitalist, who calculates the size of all global debt to be around the $200 trillion mark, although the total amount stated could also be affected by bond defaults and or debt jubilees. If we put this figure into the Bitcoin model, we get an estimated Bitcoin price of $500,000 per Bitcoin. Based on the three assets we have covered so far, the potential Bitcoin has of capturing capital outflows from these markets in the future is best summed up in a recent presentation by Mike Maloney, who's a precious metal expert and founder of GoldSilver.com. But this is going to be the biggest crash of all. The, the first crash, uh, the first Alan Greenspan bubble was stocks. It was the NASDAQ and it crashed. The second bubble was stocks and real estate and it crashed and that was the crisis of 08 and it was a lot worse than the NASDAQ crash. That was a global financial crisis. The next one is stocks, real estate and bonds. And I'll show you that stocks and real estate are very overvalued and like I said, Bonds are in, in a, they, they're nearing the end of a 35 year bull market. Uh so the next asset we're going to look at where we could see capital flows into Bitcoin from in the long term as well is narrow money, which is defined as the world's coins, banknotes and checking deposits, which are basic transactional bank accounts that offer low to no interest. The reason we could see capital flows into Bitcoin from the narrow money supply in the future is due to continued debasement of fiat currencies all around the world. This greatly reduces the purchasing power of these currencies in the long run and increases the risk of holding fiat currency as an asset. If Bitcoin continues to grow over the next decade into a widely used mainstream currency, it would be fair to expect the incentives for holding narrow currency to decline. Not only are we already experiencing zero interest rate policy, which is now trending towards negative interest rate policy, where in the near future you'll potentially be charged for holding your money in a checking deposit account, but we are also seeing, even in developed countries, much greater risk of capital controls and bail-ins, which is heightening the counterparty risk of narrow currency held in financial institutions in particular. So what would happen if just 5% of the narrow money in circulation found its way into Bitcoin in the future? Once again, based on research and statistics from the infographic by Jeff Desjardins of the Visual Capitalist, who calculates the size of all narrow currency globally to be around $28.6 trillion. If we put this figure into the Bitcoin model on top of the assets that we've already looked at today, we get an estimated Bitcoin price of $546,000 per Bitcoin. So the final market we're going to look at today where we could see capital flows into Bitcoin from in the future is the gold market. But before I look at this market, I just want to make clear that at this point in time, I personally believe that precious metals, just like Bitcoin, are great inflation and counterparty hedge assets to hold. And unlike Bitcoin, they have a proven long time history of providing a safe store of value. Precious metals have always traditionally been a safe haven asset for investors during times of severe financial crisis and tail risk in the economy. And I believe that during the next financial crisis, we will see strong capital flows into these markets. Precious metals are a good way to diverse your alternate investment portfolio, especially silver, which I believe is greatly undervalued at the current gold to silver ratio of 79 to 1, when historically the ratio was around 16 to 1, especially when you take into account that China is looking to increase investment into solar power in a big way, which provides one of the biggest industrial use cases for the precious metal. In addition, looking at this chart created by Mike Maloney of GoldSilver.com, we can clearly see that at the current level of 15 to 1, the Dow Gold ratio is indicating that gold is historically undervalued against the Dow Jones index. That said, however, if Bitcoin continues to prove its worth as a store of value over time, and the fact that unlike gold, the scarcity, ability to store, send and transact in Bitcoin is by far superior, there is huge potential that Bitcoin in the medium term could begin to compete with precious metals as a safe haven asset. So what would happen in the long run if just 5% of the capital currently invested in gold moved into Bitcoin? Based again on the infographic by Jeff Desjardins, which estimates the above ground gold supply at 183,600 tonnes from statistics taken from the World Gold Council, using a spot price of $1,200 per ounce, that would put the market capitalization of gold at around $7.8 trillion at this time. If we put this figure into the Bitcoin model, on top of all the other assets we have looked at today, we get an estimated Bitcoin price of $560,000 per Bitcoin.
So hopefully this video has given you some idea of the almost unprecedented risk reward perspective that Bitcoin has in the long term. And besides all the amazing ideological reasons for investing in and holding Bitcoin, why there is so much excitement around this new asset class. And as we have seen with other technologies that have gone through mainstream adoption in the past, once they hit the exponential part of S-curve adoption, the speed at which new technology is adopted makes the time frame stated not an impossible proposition. But remember, this is just one potential scenario that could play out. It's extremely difficult to predict at this early point in Bitcoin's life cycle, long-term timeframes and potential two-way capital flows with any degree of accuracy. And Bitcoin still has many problems to overcome if it's to ensure its longevity. These include governance, scaling, storage and centralization issues, as well as potential competition from similar technologies and unknown regulatory issues, which could no doubt have influence on potential capital flows timeframes and its long term viability. But it's clear that if Bitcoin does reach its full potential in the future, aided by the work of the Bitcoin community, the continued debasement of fiat currency and the collapse in value of other aforementioned asset classes whose valuations appear highly extended when compared to the underlying fundamentals of today's global macroeconomic climate, even if a fraction of this scenario were to play out on a long term return on investment basis, Bitcoin has good potential of becoming the only game in town. Thanks again for watching the video today and as always if you found it enjoyable and informative don't forget to like and subscribe for more content from renegadeinvestor.co.uk. Thank you.